Now let's talk about coordination compounds. These are compounds in which a metal atom, although for us it's going to be a transition metal atom, or ion is associated with a group of neutral molecules or anions by coordinate covalent bonds. And coordinate covalent bonds are going to be bonds in which one atom donates both electrons. in the bond. And we can look at this and understand this in terms of Lewis acid base theory. If you remember from Gen Chem 1, a Lewis acid accepts a pair of electrons from a Lewis base. So we can see here we've got silver plus, and we've got NH3, and we've got actually two of them. And I'm going to draw the pair of electrons on nitrogen here. We could draw the Lewis structure for ammonia. You'd find that nitrogen has a pair of electrons on it. We have a Lewis acid. In the silver ion, we have a Lewis base. In the ammonia, and those are going to form Ag, NH3, 2. And that's got a plus charge on it. Um, because, and that would be similar for this example down here for copperamine, except there would be four of them. And one of the things we don't really get into is how do we choose how many there are um, due to the bonding. That's a deeper level of understanding that we'll be able to get to. We just have to understand what's the Lewis acid, what's the Lewis base in these, and uh, we'll understand a lot more about the structure of these as well. Now, uh, the ligands, also sometimes called a ligand, I'll call it a ligand. A ligand is a small molecule or ion that donates an electron pair to the metal. And we have examples here. We've already shown you the ammonia. Now let's look at carbon monoxide, and you can see that I will draw a Lewis structure for that. And for this one, what's interesting about this is that carbon donates the pair of electrons in carbon monoxide. And if you look, think back on carbon monoxide, we know that oxygen is the more electronegative. However, carbon has the formal charge of minus one, and based on formal charges, we're going to see that carbon is going to be the one that donates the pair of electrons as a ligand. And then we can go to chlorine. It has a minus charge, a negative one formal charge, if you will, as well, and any one of those pairs. And these three, ammonia, carbon monoxide, and chlorine, are what are called monodentate ligands. And monodentate means one for mono and toothed. And they're called one toothed because they grab onto the metal ion with one pair of electrons. Ethylene diamine is going to be a bidentate ligand, meaning that it will grab on with two teeth. And ethylene diamine is going to have, oh, it's also E, is the abbreviation is lowercase en, we'll see that, uh, is going to be n, carbon, carbon, n, and it's going to have pairs of electrons and h's, and there are two more h's in there, and the pairs of electrons that do the biting to the metal cation or metal atom are going to be the pairs right there. I've also got a picture of heme here. Heme is a tetradentate ligand. And you can see we've got, uh, I think you can see in here, we've got an Fe2, which is an Fe2+. Plus, and it's actually got four nitrogens around it. Those four nitrogens are the four teeth that bite on the 
iron two plus ion. Another very common uh, tetradentate ligand is going to be uh, EDTA, ethylene diamine tetracetic acid. And uh, that, that's uh, well known because it's in many salad dressings that have additives in them. The EDTA uh, bites onto very strongly onto any uh, metal ions that should hazard their way into oils, such as uh, the oils that are in salad dressings. And those oils with metal ions uh, can go bad pretty quickly. So they add just a teeny tiny bit of EDTA and that prevents it from spoiling the oils in, for example, salad dressing. Um, another popular bidentate ligand is oxalate, which is C2O4, uh, two minus, and two of the pairs of electrons on the oxygens uh, form the teeth that bite on to the metal ions. 